Good morning. Let's do that again. Good morning. Wow. I'm happy to see you, young people. We are happy to see you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Good morning, young people. It's so nice to worship the Lord with you. It's a wonderful day. Even if it's raining, it's cooler. And that's a blessing. Amen. Amen. How many of you are listening intently last night? Oh, I'm happy. How many of you are taking notes? Hmm, very good. Last time I told you, the shortest pencil will always be a lot longer than your longer memory. If you take notes, you will never forget those important points. If you don't, when you go through that door, it's gone. So again, I encourage you to take notes. One very important thing that I learned yesterday is the importance of mother's influence. Oh boy. Who I am right now is because of my mother. I just lost her this year at 92 years old. And at 90, she always say, I'll cook that for you. Mom, if there's one thing that you want to do all over again as a mother, okay? By the way, how many kids do you have? I have only five. Wow, <laughs> I wish I have those number. Okay, if you have to do your job as a mother again, what would be one thing that you would want to do? Sounds like a question for a beauty contest. <laughs> anyway, I was surprised that before I answer, I was surprised that why I would be uh, joining you in this welcome remarks. Uh, it's only now I realize it's about mothers pala. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I have five kids. They're wonderful kids. Many of, oh, four of them are already working. I have only one who is in the college. His name is Angelo. He is in the College of Health. He's taking up nutrition. Um, it's so nice to be with my kids, actually. I took care of them maybe for the first two or three years only because, you know, our work as a teacher. If I had to do motherhood again, how I wish I would be like Jockey Bed who stayed with her children for at least for the first 12 years of Moses, right, uh, yes. growing up years. Yes. How I wish I could have been with my children for the first 12 years of their childhood days so that I could be there with them, teach them how to read. I taught them how to read though, but of course they learned it better in, with their teachers in grade one or in kinder. But how I wish I could have been with them, taught them values, yeah, the best values in life, and uh, how, to, how to respect uh, the older folks, how to be friends. And of course, I told them stories, but only during the nighttime, I would read to them stories from the Bible, the Bible stories, my Bible friends. Thank you. But Thank I wish you. I could do that, have done that for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. If there's one thing I would like to do, if I will be given the opportunity, but it's not anymore, is I would strongly encourage my wife to stay with my kids the first 12 years. When we woke up, my son was already seven years old. But from then on, from grade three all the way to grade uh, third year high school, we homeschooled him. My two girls, from grade one to fourth year, we homeschooled them. And I just thank the Lord that He has given us the chance. Yeah. Good for you. Motherhood is a very dignified job. Yeah. Responsibility, calling. What would be one thing that you would like to contribute so that that kind of dignity in mothers will be maintained or elevated higher? Yeah, actually, um, yeah. I am a mother and uh, I taught my children many things and stayed with them for a few years only. 
because most of the time I was in school. Mm -hmm. I was always with my students instead of my children. Mm -hmm. um, but I envy the mothers who are housewives. The housewives staying mm -hmm. with their children. But how I wish they will not only be called housewives. No? Mm -hmm. What because, would be? Yeah, because actually they are in Tagalog, they say ilaw ng tahanan. Yeah? But how I wish it would be more elevated into not only the house but a home. Because she takes care of the house, it is a home. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody should be respecting their mothers. So how I wish we call them the home queen. Not just a housewife. Home wife. queen, house queen. I like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, and you know, um, I encourage the students. When I interview them, I look through, go through their applications. And they're out there, what's occupation? Mother's occupation or wife's occupation? Yeah. Mother's occupation, they wrote their housewife. housewife. I said, please, from now on, young people, elevate it into a house queen or home queen. If that queen. is on one thing that we can contribute to appreciate the sacrifices of mothers, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. One thing I like also is this. Mothers, when they tra train their young, their, their young ones, their children, they try to inculcate to them values that will be there for a lifetime. You would remember one value that your mother taught you, do you? Hello? Do you remember one thing? And that's one thing I remember right now is respect authorities. Respect authorities. When pastors would come to my house, we kids would give them due respect. And that's what we are going to. Yeah, I think that's our topic for today. Respect for persons in position or in authority. Yes, yes, yes. So let's prepare ourselves, young people, everybody, for the message this uh, morning. I would like to invite all of you I would like to invite all of you once more to okay, turn off your gadgets. Okay? If, if it is going to make a loud ring, please put it on mute if you want to use your gadgets. Let's see to it. It's not going to compete with the sacredness of this worship. Thank you, Mom Lagahino, oh, for joining me this morning. Thank you. It's so nice morning. to be with you, sir, and so nice to share something worthwhile with our young people. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you, sir. young God people. God bless everyone. Welcome, welcome to our week of prayer this morning. Good morning, AUP. Let's, uh, let's stand as we sing our theme song.
Prayer thought of our session is the prayer focus of our session are outpouring of the double portion of the Holy Spirit. And our session and the sequence of our session is all will kneel down and the song leader will lead the song of June to our hearts in atmosphere of prayer and the congregation will be given three minutes of prayer and after which a song will be sung once more indicating the time is up and the faculty will conclude the prayer. Let's all kneel down. Now dear Lord as we pray take our hearts and
our loving, passionate, and merciful Heavenly Father. We come before your throne of grace. As your sons and daughters, we praise and honor your name. We are grateful that we have a God who loves us so much and accepted us as your own. We are sinners, O oh Lord. Please cleanse us from all our iniquities. Please have mercy on us so that we will be worthy to receive your blessings. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Father God, we ask for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. As we listen to your message today, please bless our speaker. Use him. Speak through him. Thank you, God, for answering our prayer and filling us with your Holy Spirit. Please use us for your purpose and your glory. We ask all these things in the loving name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
How are you feeling this morning? Are you good? No, your expression doesn't show that you are good. So let me try it one more time. A pleasant morning to all of you. How are you today? We praise God for his goodness and for every blessing that he has given you and he has given me. It has been a wonderful week starting from Monday morning. And you agree with me that, yes, we started seeing teams and names around. We saw S, and we did not know when it was coming. They promised that coming soon. And it took us a number of days, and finally we are here, heirs of God. We are transferring from our earthly homes to our spiritual home. Are you happy to be one of the members? Are you ready to be part of God's kingdom? Yes, heirs. We have been studying all over this week. And everything that we are learning from here and also from personal studies is about what you and I need to do so that we can be part of God's kingdom. There are lessons that we have learned and you and I agree that if we neglect or if we ignore the call from God, we may not be part of it. This morning is no different. We are continuing the series that we began on Monday morning. And here is the fifth section. Friends, I'll be talking on a topic, suicide mission. It's a story about David and Absalom. But I believe by the time we finish this morning... You will see yourself in the message. I will see myself in the message. It is my humble prayer that the Holy Spirit and Jesus alone will speak to you. Friends, I'll plead with you right now that you bow your heads and we seek the Most High in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, down on my knees, Father, I surrender everything to you. I surrender myself, Father, to you because I am nothing. I pray, dear Lord, that Jesus and Jesus alone will be heard. Holy Spirit, as you came on the day of Pentecost, I plead that you come this morning. Move among all of us like the rushing wind and stir in us the fear and trembling that will be drawn closer to Jesus. As you spoke through the apostles that Father they heard in different languages, I pray that this medium will be used to speak to my brothers and sisters so that you will have us back to yourself. Let your will, Jesus, and only your will be done, I pray. Amen. Every child coming from whatever home, whether you come from the rich family or you come from the poor family, friends, you have parents that are proud of you. You have parents that are always excited to see you going back and forth. In fact, when you succeed in anything, your parents hit their chest and say, this is my son, this is my daughter. There is a group of people that we also know in families called mommy girl, daddy's girl. And yes, there is a nice term given to them, spoiled brats. Spoiled brats are always proud. They are always excited. They have everything they need in life right there at their command. Mom, I need this. 
and it's there. Dad, if you don't give me, I will not. And it's in. Everything is given to them. You know, spoiled brats are genius. True or false? Guys, if you want us to go early, cooperate with me. True or false? Yes, some spoiled brats are genius. Some are also super duper lazy. True or false? Yes, because anytime they want something, it's the nanny, the caretaker, that has to bring it to them. Their mouth tastes, their hands don't touch. Spoiled brats, you know, I was thinking of people that I can use to explain what I mean, and I found this handsome and beautiful lady and guy on the screen. They are the sort of spoiled brats that I can talk about this morning. In fact, spoiled brats, a lot of times, take things into their own hands. They are the masters of their world. They hate rulers, leaders that will tell them, hey, this is the law, and you have to abide by it. Spoiled brats hate leaders. They hate laws that always restrict them or prevent them from doing what they feel, yes, is my freedom. And I want to do it. I don't care how much it hurts you. I don't care what it's going to do to the other person. Spoiled brats. Friends, right in the Bible, we have a similar case like that. We have someone also in the Bible called Absalom. Right from the family of King David, his third son, Absalom, was a type of spoiled brat. Yes, King David, rich, handsome, strong, powerful as he was. He was proud of his son, Absalom. Absalom, we are told from the Bible, first or second Samuel, chapter 13 to chapter 19, that he was handsome like his dad. You know, a lot of times I go to the dorms and I see the guys. They will go and stand in front of the mirror and they will be doing that. Queer Poggy. Here am I. And I'll see my sisters before they get out of the classroom. They will just open their bag, pick some powder, put it there mm -hmm, at a beauty. Friends, let me tell you something. The description of the Bible about Absalom cannot be compared to Uganda and Poggy. Yes, let me underline it, because their hands or his handsome nature did not come from Ole and Likas Papaya. When the Bible describes that it's beautiful, yes, it's beautiful. When the Bible says it's handsome, friends, I will buy it. It's handsome. A guy that will be proud of his hair, then... The Bible is true. Absalom, because of his nature, became proud. Yes, we learn from the Bible that he was charismatic like his father. He was able to draw most of the Israelites to follow him instead of his father. We learn from the Bible that Absalom became self-centered, self-righteous. Absalom, we are told from the Bible that, yes, he was sort of wicked guy. If you step on his toes, he will slap you in the face. That is the illustration that I can give about Absalom. Friends, this morning we are talking about suicide mission. And most of us are on a path that we have no idea that in the end, it will end as suicidal. What are you talking about, Joseph? This is a definition from 
Merriam-Webster about suicide. It says, an action that ruins or destroys your career. What next? Your social position and your relationship with others. Miriam Webster says, this is also suicide. It is not only hanging a rope up there in the sky and trying if it will fit your neck. That is suicide. Your actions ruins a lot of times your relation with others. Your social relation is affected by certain things that you do. Absalom was a type like that. Absalom did a lot that the Bible even mentions that at a point because of his pride, he decided to rise against his own father. Friends, it's very sad that a father and a mother will raise up a child, playing with a child, teaching him or her how to walk. And at the end of the day, this child will be pointing fingers at the father in the face. It is very sad that mommy will be crying when you are sick. And at the end of the day, you've grown up and tell her, mom, it is my world and I will live it the way I want. Friends, it's very sad that, yes, the rice that mom needs to eat will be given to you. And here we are, we've turned to be like Absalom. It is very sad that mom will not be having money, yes, to buy clothes for herself to look beautiful, for dad to admire, yet he will find money and pay your tuition. And at the end of the day, will be pointing fingers at them. Absalom was a type. There is a bit of Absalom in us this morning. There is a bit of Absalom in us. Absalom was proud. Absalom was wicked. Absalom was sort of a guy that none of us, I will pray that we learn from. Where did Absalom learn all these things? Where did Absalom learn all these things? Have you ever thought of it? Those of us that have been reading the Bible many times, and we know the story of Absalom very well, have we ever thought, where did Absalom learn this? We're talking about accents that ruins your career, your social position, and relationship with others. Friends, except the rebellious attitude, Absalom did not get it from anywhere, but somehow he was influenced by his father, David. It's shocking, right? Yes. It's very shocking. And that is how and why at this point I will plead with my dear professors, with my dear administrators. There are certain things that you are doing. And yes, we are learning from you. So please, take a good look at yourself and ask yourself whether you are imparting the right lessons to us. As we walk in and out of your classrooms, out of your offices, pastors, elders, leaders, are you giving us the right example? We learn from 2 Samuel chapter 11 to chapter 12 that in the mid and last part of King David, he became corrupt. He forcefully took the wife of Uriah, got her pregnant, plot the death of the husband Uriah. Friends, this influence transferred to his male children. Yes, Amnon, the firstborn, became a rapist. 
Absalom, the third son, became resentful. Absalom became revengeful. And I think at this point you are asking me, when was David revengeful? Because we read in the Bible that David never revenged anyone. Read carefully. Before his death, he told Solomon to make sure that Joab never die in peace. Friends, this was inherited by the son Absalom. Solomon became completed for me. Friends, this is where Absalom got his traits from. And that is why you and I need to be careful of things, lives that we are living. Because somehow someone is watching. Because somehow your younger brother, your younger sister is watching you at Te and Kuya. And little by little, they are learning from you. We are talking about the story of King David and his family. Yes, the whole of this week we are talking about God's family. Yes, the whole of this week we are talking about how we need to be careful in our decision making. The whole of this week we are talking about how we need to put away self and take up Jesus. We need to put away pride and accept humility so that you and I can be part of God's kingdom. The story continues. Friends, yes, King David was somehow evil. King David was somehow corrupt. King David had some tendencies that were not good. But it was not a lunch pad for Absalom to rise against the father. It was not a jump shot. For him to say, yes, my dad, you did this to that woman. You are like this person, so I am going to rise against you. Why? The Bible says, children, honor your father and, I can't hear you, please. Honor your father and, so that, Friends, I am bringing it down to our level. I have a poor dad, and I have a poor mom. Friends, you may have a mother who is smoking herself to death. You may have a father that is a drunk, and is not able to contribute a centavo towards your study here in AUP, but gets money to buy horse beer. Friends, you have no reason to disrespect that drunk father of yours. For instance, you have no reason to disrespect that smoking mother of yours. Because the Bible says, honor your father, honor your mother, so that your days, my days, will be long on planet earth. It is a command from God. At this point, we are not talking only about our elderly mothers back in Putin Kahoy and the rest of the places. We are not talking about only them. We are also talking about leaders. Some of us are here in AUP, and it is our second family. AUP is now our home. And it's very sad to say that we are full of negatives about our own institution. We are full of anger, hatred, bitterness about AUP. Some of us go to the extent of calling this institution Adventist University of Pharisees. We write this kind of negative comments on Facebook. We call our leaders certain kinds of names to a point that some of us, we call them that the decisions they make are insane. It doesn't make sense. And at the end of the day, 
After saying all these things, we go back, sit under their feet, and expect them to teach us. Friends, Romans is speaking to us this morning. Let some draw forth. Let some be subject to the governing authorities. Yes or no? The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which is from God. Our leaders may be corrupt. Yes, gate pass conditions are boring. Dumb worship. No need. PIC attendance. It doesn't make sense. Yet, the Bible says, let be subject to these decisions. If you have your Bible, turn it to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. The Bible itself agreed that discipline is not easy. Discipline, the Bible says, from its very beginning is hard. It is not easy to adjust ourselves to it. But, but the Bible says those that are trained by them at the end of the day find the peace of the Lord. How long have we been rising against authorities? How long have we been writing negative comments on social media? How long have we been hiding tapes in their meetings so that we will spread rumors around? How long have we been hiding resentment, anger, rebellion, revenge in our hearts? That at the end of the day, we don't see eye to eye with one another. We are God's family. Yes, I come from the western part of Ghana, but I know there is only one thing that redeemed me, and it's the blood of Jesus. I know there is only one person that called me to life, and it's Jesus, and because of him, I am part of God's family. And so you are. So therefore, the divisions... The bickering, the backbiting, backstabbing, the hatred and anger that we are living with in God's family, very soon Jesus will come. And with that attitude, we can never be part of God's kingdom. Heirs, we are. We are God heirs. Friends, this is not our home. We are transferring. And very soon the trumpets shall sound, and the Lord Jesus will come. But the question is, what kind of lifestyle are you living? What kind of behavior are you putting up? What kind of decisions are you making to influence others? Actions. That ruins our relationship, social, career, and positions are what is sending us to our grave. I was talking about Absalom earlier on. Yes, because of pride, because of resentment, because of rebellion, Absalom killed himself. On a horse riding in that amount of speed, his head that he's proud of was flying, and it caught a tree branch, and that was the end. At this point, I want to say, that there are very things that you are proud of. There are things that you boast of. Be careful because it might lead to your grave like Absalom. Be careful. It may be your high GPA. At the end of the day, it will lead you to somewhere you don't want to be. The authorities that exist, continuing Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. The authorities that exist have been established by AUP. Amen? The authorities that we disrespect, the laws of the school that we think it doesn't make sense, the decisions that we think it is boring, they are established by God. And that is why we need to be careful the way we approach it. The story continues. Consequently, 
whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. Amen? Whenever we think it is not right and we want to take an action, friends, we rise against God. And therefore, we have to be careful. The Bible continues, and those who do so will bring judgment upon themselves. Friends, it was when I was studying this passage that I realized respecting authorities is a matter of life and death, salvation and damnation. So if you are playing with your parents, if you are playing with authority, be careful. The Bible speaks. We bring judgment upon ourselves. In other translations, it's used the word damnation. Friends, our leaders are there for our good. Our leaders are there for our good, and that is what the Bible is saying. For rulers are no terror to those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear and of the authority? The Bible says, then do what is right. If we show respect, if we show honor, if we give them honor, yes, God knows how to deal with the leaders. At this point, I want to point a lesson that we learned from the Bible. David, yes, in his early childhood, was anointed to be king over Israel. Saul was still in place. For 12 years, David had to run for his life. David, in 12 years, never rose against the authority of King Saul. It got to a point, different occasions, that he was delivered to his hands. But David cried, how can I rise against the Lord's anointed? Friends, any time you and I are tempted to rebel, ask yourself, can I disrespect the authority that God has put in place? Any time that we are pointing fingers at our parents and tell them, Mom, you don't understand. It is my world right now, and I want to leave it. Friends, remember, we are disrespecting the authority that God has put in place. We also learn from the Bible, Jesus, as a perfect example, Jesus was like God, but at the end of the day, took the servant attitude, the spirit of humility that he can reach your level and can reach my junk level. That is a lesson that we need to learn. Friends, what damnation do we bring upon ourselves when we disrespect authorities? When we disrespect our parents, what damnation do we bring on ourselves? Cursed we become. The Bible in Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 16, it says, Cursed is anyone who dishonors their father and their mother. And here it includes also the authorities that are in place. And it's time that we do it. We bring curses upon ourselves. Yes, you read your Bible, I read my Bible, and we learn from the attitude of Absalom how it ended him. We need to be careful. God does not want your end to be like the end of Absalom. God does not want your end to be like the end of Lucifer. God does not want your end to be the end of Judas Iscariot. God wants your end to be part of him in his kingdom. Next, 1 Samuel. Those of us that we think it's just a little rebellion, it's just a little that I want to show to them that I am also a foreigner in Philippines, Read carefully. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 25, For rebellion 
is like the sin of divination, witchcraft, and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry. Friends, if you are arrogant, compared to idol worship, no difference. Friends, if you are rebellion, compared to the character of a witch, a wizard, no difference. I didn't say it. The Bible is speaking. And therefore, we need to be careful. And therefore, we need to do something about our attitude. Very soon, Jesus will come. Yes, those of us that are complaining about the loss of their homes, those of us that are crying too much loss, and they themselves even apply them. This is what the messenger of the Lord, Ellen White, is saying from Patriarchs and Prophets, page 579. There is no greater curse upon the households than to allow the youth to have their own way. If you want to believe in a free world, friends, you are encouraging your parents to bring curses upon themselves and also upon you. If there are no rules, there are no laws in our compound right now, our leaders are inviting curses upon themselves. Is that what we want? Friends, is this what we want? Mom, allow me to go crazy and at the end of the day I'll blame you. Is that what we want? Allow me to be a drunk in the street of Pudding Cahoy, a smoker in the Pudding Cahoy street, and at the end of the day, when I get cancer and I start coughing, Mom, why didn't you take care of me? Is that what we want? That is why our leaders, our parents, are making sure that we are in the safe zone. They are not hating us. They are not disliking us. They are not taking away our freedom. They want our best. They want the best for our future. Friends, I don't know what and what you've been doing all this time. I don't know how you have been living your life. I don't know how you have been writing on Facebook about leaders, but it is time we need to change. It is time that we need to give ourselves to Jesus. Whenever our actions will stand in opposition to Christ, authority, institutional rules, parents' authority, friends, we are on a suicide mission. At the end of the day, the things that we do, yes, will bring up the same products. And this goes to my leaders also. When decisions that you make stand in opposition of God's word. Friends and my dear leaders, we are on a suicide mission. And therefore, we need to do something about it. To those of us who don't understand why there are too many rules, this is the study from Banner Reset Group website, and this is what it says. Demonstrating love, Exhibiting patience, enforcing discipline, offering understanding. This makes our parents raise us in a positive and effective way. So, whenever you feel like rebelling, pray that God will give you strength. Whenever you feel like pointing fingers, pray that the Holy Spirit will take over. Whenever you feel like saying F words, calling our leaders' names, friends, whisper a prayer to God and the Holy Spirit will take over from there. What do we have to do? Having said all this, honor. Having said all this, what do we have to do? We'll still go back to the command of the Lord. It is a command. And we have to. It did not come from me. It did not come from our leaders. How many of us have Bibles here? Please let me see your Bibles. Those who have Bibles, yes. Right there in your Bible, whether soft or hard copy, the Bible says, honor your father 
and your mother. You know, my friend sitting there right now will tell me the English word is twisted. And a lot of times it takes the understanding of the word. The word Anna from Hebrew says kabad or kabed. And in English, it suggests that let the respect of our parents be a weight on our head. Let it be a weight weighing us down that no matter how they, pull, they push us, no matter how they frustrate us, we will still say, because of the command of God, I will be obedient. No matter what happens, the Bible calls you and I to honor our parents. Not only mom and dad, at home right now, in your country right now, but also the Bible is talking about leaders that have been established by God. This goes to our leaders, our faculty. Yes, a lot of times certain units that you get is not to your satisfaction. And you go to the point that this class, I'm never going to show up. Or even if I show up, the students will not get the best of me. Because I didn't want it, and they pushed it on me. A lot of times, my leaders, certain decisions from the administration doesn't go your way. And you feel like you will not abide. The Bible says, slaves, workers, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear with sincerity of heart, just as you will obey Christ. Friends, I know if it is Christ Jesus that is sitting in the administrative chair, you always go there every morning and bow. Friends, I know if it is Christ that is leading our institution right now, every day we will show respect. Friends, I know that if it is Christ that is in our home, yes, every time we will show honor, dignity, and respect. This morning, Jesus that we fear, Jesus that we love, Jesus that we want to walk with says we should honor our mother and our father. Jesus that we love is calling you and I to respect authorities. Jesus that we want to walk with in the streets of heaven. It's calling us to humility. Friends, I don't know what you've been holding on to. David has two sides. At his youthful days, he was a messenger of God. At his youthful days, he stood that, yes, God and God alone. I don't know what you are battling with. I don't know what you are striving with. But Jesus is willing to help you. He is the best example. As the appeal song comes, I want you to think of a resentment in your heart. As the sister sings, or as the brother sings, Queer, I'm very sorry. As Queer sings, I want you to think of the revenge that is in your heart. The rebellious attitude that you've been mounting up all this time. I want you to think about it and do something also about it. Of 
his family, the family of God. Do you know how sweet to be in God's loving family? Oh, such fellowship to be in his kingdom let us come and be a part of his family the family of god for when in jesus we abide and we worship side by side joyful singing without end Heavenly angels will attend. Let us love one another, every brother and sister. Come and be a part of his family, the family of God. Living for Jesus, abiding in his word. brother and sister come and be a part of his family the family of God in the family the family of God. Friends, my dear leaders, we have heard in my hands right now I have a bunch of grapes. And you know, these grapes did not just drop like this. The farmer who planted these grapes did not put this thing in the ground and it came up like this. When I opened the grape, I just saw a tiny seed. Just a tiny seed. And this is what the farmer dropped in the soil. And it germinated and it started growing and it became a tree a big tree and it was growing and what we see right now came up and you agree with me that this is not a whole grape because the plant itself is left out there in the field this morning I want to plead with you and this appeal is coming to whoever is sitting right now with a little seed of resentment in the heart. I am appealing to someone out there that there is a little seed of bitterness in your heart about someone here or someone out there. Friends, my dear leaders, I am pleading with you that if there is a little seed like the seed of grape in your heart that makes you dislike groups of people. This morning, we want to be part of God's kingdom. This morning, we want to walk side by side with Jesus. If there is something like that, that has ever pushed you to write a negative comment, said a negative comment about someone, I am inviting you to stand on your feet. 
I am inviting you, friends, to stand on your feet. If there is that amount of seed, my dear leaders out there, that makes it hard for you to see eye to eye when you sit at the decision table. And if things does not go your way, no action will be taken. Please, I'm inviting you to stand on your feet. It was just a little seed that the farmer put in the soil. He nursed it. He nursed it and it started growing. Friends, it was a little seed of revenge, anger, hatred about Amnon that Absalom developed because the father did not revenge for the sister who was raped by the elder brother. This seed started growing. It started growing. It started growing and yes, at the end of the day, he killed his brother and he lost his soul. Friends, spiritual growth is not about position. It's about movement. So this time I want you also to do something. If you want to let go of the pain, of the anger, of the hatred that is in your heart, I want you to make a move to meet Jesus. I want you to come forward before we pray. Yes, there is pain out there and it's very hard for you to let go. When we read the Bible in Isaiah, chapter, uh, Psalms 66, verse 18, the Bible says, if we harbor iniquity in our hearts, God will not hear our prayer. Friends, if you want to let go and let Jesus take over, I am inviting you to take a step forward so that we'll pray together. I want you to make a move and meet Jesus. Very soon, Jesus will come. Yes, and we will be with him forever. But it's very hard to harbor the pain. It's very hard for you to let go. Jesus is inviting you to come and drop that seed in his soil. Jesus is inviting you to come forward so that you will be part of the kingdom. The next group that I want to ask to come forward. Maybe yours is not a pain in your heart not pain in your life, not bitterness. Yes, you have heard about God's kingdom, yet you are not part of the people. And you want to be part of God's kingdom through baptism? Friends, if you want to take advantage, Jesus is inviting you also to come forward. Before we pray, yes, you want to be part of God's kingdom through baptism. We want to be part of God's kingdom through baptism. Jesus is inviting you. We want to be part of God's kingdom. Friends, this world is not our home. Very soon, we've heard of Jesus. And yes, he will come. Is there someone else who want to make a move for Jesus? Is there someone else that the Holy Spirit is speaking to? My dear leaders, it may be you. It is not about your position. It's not about your status. It is about getting along well with God who will help you to let go of the pain. It is getting along with Jesus who understands every pain you are going through so that you can get along with your dear brother and with your dear sister. Let's all bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Faithful and righteous Father in heaven, dear God, we thank you very, very much for what you have done for us. Father, the death of Absalom hurt David so much that he cried, my son Absalom, my son. And Father, we believe any time we hold anger, hatred, dislike, bitterness about one another because of what we have suffered, you also cry out, my son, my daughter, let go. This morning here are your sons and daughters and those that are still 
out there saying, Father, we want to work with you. It's very hard for them, and you understand. We commit all into your hands, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name that, Father, you will heal our wounded hearts and our broken spirits so that, Father, we can walk with you when Jesus appears in the clouds of heaven. This morning and this week, the fire that is set in us, may it continue to burn and consume us till Jesus is seen in our lives. Till love become the song that we sing. Till love become the actions that we show. Bless us as a church. Bless us as an institution. Bless us as individual families. Bless us as your children. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters. To those who want to be baptized, yes, For our leaders in church will be willing to meet you and prepare and you for Sabbath. Side God by bless side. everyone. Joyful singing without end, heavenly angels will attend. Let us love one another, every brother and sister. Come and be a part of his family, the family of God. In the family, the family of God.